All right, guys. This week we're talking about the uses for the flex data. That's the Gemaware flex. And um, last, last time we talked about the data that we collect with the, the Gemaware RS unit. So, so we, this week we're going to talk about um, the flex and some of the awesome features it has. The data. All right. So we're going to cover like total tonnage and total reps, mean, peak velocity, um, mean and peak power, distance, bar path, but you won't believe how much stuff is in those five points. All right, first, total tonnage and total reps. With these two variables, there are multiple data points that, that can be derived, like average intensity, K value, monotony and strain, effect size, and more. And we're going to learn about it. K value. Hopefully I can explain this in a way that will seem simple. But anyway, Bob Takano, he popularized the you know, K-value here in America after learning from Carl Miller in 1974. The Bulgarian coach, Professor Angel Spasov, I don't know if I crushed that or not, but discussed during his American tour, so all the coaches started talking. So it's used to predict average intensities that are required for future progress. Been, and you'll, I'll bring it home when I explain how to do it, so... Bear with me. It's based on current performance uh, to predict necessary parameters for intended success in the future. It can be used in powerlifting, weightlifting, or athletic performance, and just need two to three key indicators. For example, you know, snatch and clean and jerk, obviously, if it's weightlifting, or like say if you're a strength and conditioning coach, if you can just use like a uh, the total between trial bar and hand clean or whatever. So here's what you need to, to figure out. The K value, you need total tonnage um, of a competition or training block macro cycle, usually 12 to 20 weeks. Only count um, major multi-joint movements. Um, total, you need the total number of reps, and you need the total achieved. It needs to be a successful training um, macro cycle. Here's an example. So step one, total tonnage. Uh, let me... Obviously, I don't know if there's someone out there who doesn't know how to do it here. Let me explain it. So let's say in snatch. If you, the first set, you get 100 kilos for three reps, 110 for two, 120 for one in the third. So the total is going to be 300 kilograms because set one is 100 times three plus 220 um, plus 220, which is set two because you did 110 times two plus the 120. So the total of that is 640 kilograms, and there's six total reps. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then in the squat, you do 200 for three, 210, two sets of three, 220 by three. You add that up. In the first set, you did 600 kilograms total tonnage. Second set, you did 1260. And then in the, I mean, second set, you did two sets of three. So it's really four sets. In the third set, you did um, 220 by three, 660. So, in that one, you did a total tonnage of 2,520 times 12 reps. So, the total tonnage for the session is just those two combined, which is 3,160 and 18 reps. So, keep in mind, the flex automatically tracks total tonnage and total reps for you. You don't have to worry about it. Um, average intensity simply means the total tonnage divided by the total number of reps. Uh, average intensity here would be... 3,160 divided by 18, so the average was 175.55 kilograms. We're going to round it to 176. Um, the K value, here's how to figure it out, equals the average intensity times 100 divided by proposed total. Let me, let me bring it home for you here. So let's say that a total tonnage for a 12-week cycle is 800,000 kilograms, so, and the total reps is 7,000. Just making it simple for you. Earns a total of three hundred. Earns a total of three hundred twenty kilograms in the snatch and clean jerk. This is a for a competition. You total that. So the K value equals average intensity times one hundred divided by proposed total. We already said it. So total volume divided by the total number of reps, eight hundred thousand kilograms up here that we already talked about, divided by the seven thousand reps equals an average intensity of one hundred fourteen kilograms. So it took one hundred fourteen kilograms average um, times it by 100 so 114 times 100 equals 11,400 so to find the K value divided uh, divide 11,400 by 320 kilograms successful total equals a K value of 35.6 
Therefore, the new goal, if it's 330 kilograms, multiply it 330 times the 0.356, because the K value is actually a percentage. So 35.6 becomes 0.356, equaling 117.48, rounded to 118. So now you're going to need to have an average intensity of 118 kilograms if you want to go up 10 kilograms in your total. And that's a big, you know, that's a pretty big jump. So, but if it had been like, you know, um, you just wanted five more kilograms, this would have been a whole lot less. But still, you think about it, like he averaged 114 here. You're only asking for four more kilograms. It'd probably been more like two, obviously, if you're the only one to go up five. And so your average intensity will need to become 118 in your next training block to potentially total 330. Now, is this a guarantee? No. But what it really tells you is you don't need near as much as you think as far as increased um, volume to do a successful next attempt. <clears throat> K value can be used for athletic performance or whatever. Some options per category if you want. I would choose one out of each of these or you know one from a couple of them but high velocity you can use power snatch or derivatives. A squat jump reaching a minimum of 12 inches. You have to put a, a height to ensure a focus on velocity and once again the flex by gym aware measures distance um, or med ball over a predetermined height. You have to have constants, so be careful. Power in the power section, you have power clean, hang clean, trap bar jumps, um, strength, back squat, front squat, bench press, strict, uh, strict press. Some other parameters with tonnage and reps is effect size, which we've talked about in the um, a couple of the past. Uh, articles and videos but so look at each day compared to the preceding seven days uh, significant increases increases the risk of injury so you know you want to yeah you want to like step up and step down but never jump up too much as it's relative to the you know past seven days uh, monotony is the daily average tonnage for a week divided by that same week's standard deviation and look at um and look at how much of the program varies from day to day. So a small standard deviation has a direct correlation to an increased risk of injury and poor training response. Strain is the total weekly, that's the total weekly tonnage multiplied by monotony. That's the real impact. So, and I'm going to go over it in a video right now. Guys, I'm just going to give you a quick um, explanation of what monotony and strain is. So... Luckily, with what the flex does, it gives us all the information that we need to figure out monotony but, and strain. But monotony is just a way of looking at the way we wave training. And all research would say that, you know, you want to, you know, have some high volume days, low volume days, medium volume days. Because doing the same volume day in and day out leads to not only injury, but, you know, lack of progress. So let me show you where, um, and on this one. The monotony is simply that orange line. And I'll explain what monotony is down here. Monotony is simply the uh, daily average volume for a week divided by standard deviation, which is the way the, you know, it's obviously the way the days um, uh, deviate and change. And so strain up here is simply monotony times total weekly volume. So that strain, the gray, the gray one, really shows you... Uh, what the impact of the week was like and when you start getting close to this too you know you pushed it pretty hard both with monotony and or strain so anyway i hope that uh, makes total sense to you and i recommend that you all track it any way that you can monitor your your um your training with the uh, programs to hopefully potentially based on the research avoid injuries and to make sure you're maximizing performance you want to do it so